This is a high-level demonstration of geolocation capabilities using the Enritsu Vision software along with remote spectrum monitoring hardware. Using our hardware setup located at the Enritsu campus in California, we have placed three receivers or probes at various locations to simulate an interference situation. We're generating a signal at 457.5125 megahertz which we will then geolocate. This is the vision monitor interface. Here we see three receivers named after their respective locations at building B, C, and D. We're concentrating here on the geolocation feature of vision, so we'll not be going through all the setup procedures uh, for the receivers in this video. We'll concentrate only on the location aspect of vision. To see some of the spectrum traces already captured by each receiver, we scroll through the different traces here. You can see at the bottom right of the trace display the time and date stamp captured by the GPS receiver in each hardware probe. By clicking on the icon map, we can also see the position of each receiver at the Enritsu campus. In order to initiate the geolocation process, click on the Location Finder icon at the top of the screen. The positions of each receiver are shown by the red icons on the map. We'll first demonstrate the power of arrival geolocation method. POA is generally used for low bandwidth signals, uh, signals under 10 to 25 kilohertz. Power levels received from each receiver are measured producing a location estimate by the software. The bullseyes indicate the position of the signal of interest. This is the software estimate of the signal position. Uh, this is the signal that we're generating at 457.5125 megahertz. To see the position estimates as a function of time, we click on the Synchronize Traces button. We can then slide the bar on one trace while the other traces move in sync. The power fluctuations you see with a location estimate, uh, you see the bullseye moving there, is due to the instantaneous multipath effects of the signal received at each probe. The power level of each receiver can then be seen at the bottom left of each trace in the right-hand column. We'll now demonstrate a TDOA measurement, time difference of arrival. We first leave our capture bandwidth set to 2.67 megahertz. This is the IQ bandwidth of the signal of, of interest. To start the TDOA process, just click on the Start Data Collection button. The intersection of the three hyperbolic lines indicates the estimation of the signal position. We'll perform the demonstration again using a different capture bandwidth. Similar results can be seen. In general, capture bandwidths of several megahertz are sufficient to ob obtain a good TDOA estimation. So this concludes our demonstration of both geolocation methods, POA and TDOA. TDOA is generally more accurate for larger bandwidth signals. However, P POA allows the use of geolocation estimates for spectrum history due to its limits, me limited memory storage requirements. Thanks for watching.